Yes people, what is good? I am BA back once again with another reaction in the Rome series. This is episode 6 of season 2 and it is called Filippi, Felipe, Felipe. It's definitely got to be one of those three pronunciations, surely. Last episode, first of all we saw Lucius getting re-acclimated at home with his family. We quickly learned that his family were planning on running away. Kind of understandable given the way he used to be and on top of that he technically did make his wife kill herself even though of course that's a choice she inevitably made herself. He did force her into that situation and it did look like he was about to kill her had she not have done it herself anyway. So in the end his children do manage to get enough money to run away but they run right to his widow's sister who convinces them to go back and just try hard to get along as a family and she also gives them some hard truths as to what's waiting for them if they did choose to just live a life on the street. So they go back and seemingly try to make happy families with Lucius and it was good to see. Octavian has been recast and is back in Rome and we got to see a real jockeying of position between him and Cicero last episode. Cicero thinking he was going to be able to manipulate Octavian but as soon as he gave Octavian his chair as consul in the Senate, Octavian basically told Cicero to fuck off. This caused Cicero to write to Brutus and the other guy Brutus is with to assemble their legions to attack Octavian and at that point you thought okay he's really got his back against the wall but then he decided to through his mum reach out to Mark Antony and it appears like they are going to be teaming up against Brutus. This is incredible, I hope this is what happens and if it does, even though technically they've got the lesser manpower, fewer legions, I do back Mark Antony and Octavian to lay waste and hopefully kill Brutus once and for all but of course there is but only one way to find out so let's do this shit this is episode 6 season 2 of Rome Felipe or something like that let's check it out and see what it's saying to it I already know this is Brutus's army screen full of dead men that's all I see Ghosts on horses. Beautiful horses. I hope none of the horses are harmed. But yeah, kill all the men on them. Then if the horses get cold, they can cut the humans open and sleep inside of them. Uh, look up, Cassius. Look around. Is it not wonderful? Brutus has had a real pep in his step ever since he got this news from Cicero. He truly believes he's going to win this battle. I truly believe he is about to get his ass handed to him. And I'm shocked that he's not acting more accordingly. Uh, traditionally it's Hya, Brutus, okay? That horse was embarrassed to respond to a HA! When both our armies arrive in Greece, they will be trapped. Oh, I'm loving watching these two planning their war games. I could watch a whole episode of this shit. Making use of strategic surprise is obvious. There's a list of the most prominent supporters of Brutus and Cassius left in Rome. I like how he called Mark Antony's idea obvious before going into his own plan to kill a few Senate members. Cicero is the cleverest bastard of them all and he has the largest network of spies he must die first. Agreed. 100% agreed with that. You will remain behind with a small force. Keep the peace in Rome after we've left. I pledge to agree with you. See if this guy gives word to Cicero or anybody on that list that they're to be killed. I will never forgive this prick. I don't even know his name. Was it Lepidus? I hope he gets leprosy if that's where his mind's at. I don't like the girl. She's bad influence. This is not a game, mother. Her father is immensely rich. Oh, unto Rufus Tranquillus, then. No way, she's having that girl's dad killed just because she's got an issue with the daughter. <laughs> oh my god. Atia never fails to surprise me with how fucking vindictive she can be. I told the old fool I'd do it if you ever cross me again. Nobody can possibly say that I don't keep my word. I cannot wait to see this. If anyone intervenes in Cicero's death, they are instantly my most hated character in the whole show. When you return, you must bring me Brutus's head as a wedding present. A wedding? Hm. Yes, we must think about that. <laughs> Now, I've known enough people in my life to know that that's his way of saying he does not want to marry you, Atia. Hate to be the bearer of bad news. Wash that off at once. Yes, father. Oh no, he's starting to be a strict dad again. I suppose he's got it in the back of his mind that she was just being a prostitute, so that would worry him a little bit, that she's dolling herself up for the guys again. But more so just that the woman he banged is moving in on his family a little bit. He says don't paint her, don't fucking paint her. Spoken like a true third man. She's a sneaky bitch saying that. No 
Be careful, slave. I have my limits. Yeah, she needs to watch her mouth. She shouldn't be trying to stop the pot like that. <laughs> and I understand Lucius' stance in that moment, but this is just going to make his daughter hate him even more. You've been given license to kill them? License by who? You. Order of Octavian Caesar. Must be so satisfying any time someone tries to question his authority and he can be like, no, no, this is actually Caesar Octavian that's gave me this order, so, you know, go fuck yourself. <laughs> I just noticed that building had a little thing outside saying it was like the offices of Lucius Varinus, basically. That's the one. He better not be trying to do something to Lucius's children after everything they've already been through. Oh, they're plotting some bullshit. I don't know what they're plotting, but it's definitely bullshitish. 80 of the richest, noblest patricians for you to murder and then rob. Oh, these are the guys that have been tasked with killing all the Senate members and rich people that Octavian doesn't like. Well, they're definitely cutthroats. I don't trust them, but they're definitely good for the job if they actually do it. See the Collegia as more than purveyors of violence and fear. But that is what we are. It's called winning over your public homeless Santa Claus. Whoever wins in Greece wins Rome. Some kind of peace will follow. He is entrusting these guys with a lot of information. He should have just gave them a list and said, kill the people on this list, no questions asked. He shouldn't have filled them in with the fucking plot outline. I see. Play the big man and make us look bad. For that, you need no help from me. (laughs) You tell him, Lucius. By all means, goodwill. I hope this guy gets it and he's not just saying whatever he thinks will appease Lucius. You never know who to trust in this show. Everyone's plotting at all times. I wish I caught a glimpse of the person who put this guy up to this. I saw him for a second. It looked like the other Aventine crime boss, but I'm not sure if it was. All I know is we've already seen one assassin get his foot in the door this series by, you know, feigning romantic interest with people. So at this point, I assume this man to be an assassin. And it's done. So he's working for both crime bosses then. I've got a feeling their plan isn't going to end well. I know your game. I don't want any part of it. Too bad. Last episode, I fucking thought she was just a cool person who was getting treated a bit bad by Lucius. This episode, she seems like an absolute conniving bitch. If you ever change your mind. Oh no! Nice wife is now witnessing it. I hope she doesn't take that the wrong way. He genuinely told her to fuck off. A bit of work. Only for the day. Why don't you come along? He saved that very well in Vitanor. Good move, Titus. Good move. Good luck. Ha! It's my middle name. It kind of is at this point. Can't even argue with it. I wish I could tally up in my head right now all the things he has miraculously survived since season one, but, you know, from his caved-in head and then to his almost execution in a gladiatorial combat arena, he's doing well for himself. Dominus. He's getting warm! Fuck off! Out with it. Fuck off. This is infuriating. I fucking knew someone would tell him. How does this little rat manage it? This is the most infuriated I've been this entire show. That fucking weasel. I keep disrespecting rats and weasels and stuff. Beautiful animals, but you know, a human rat is kind of weird. He's a human rat. Imagine it. It's like the kid from The Witches. Octavian and Antony are reconciled. Their two armies are united. Oh, please, someone cut his throat right now. Dominus! Armed men are at the door! You must run! No. Good. I don't care if he sends his letter as long as he dies. You must get this letter to Brutus and Sad on your life. Yes, sir. Hope they all three of these guys get killed. Please stop the letter. But more importantly, stop Cicero. What is your name, young man? Titus Pullo, sir. I'm not mad it's Titus Pullo that gets to do it. My killer's name, no doubt, will live on also. My name? <laughs> thought you meant me. (laughs) 
Titus was genuinely curious as to whether or not Cicero had discovered the elixir of life there. Can't fault the guy's innocence. Leave him alone! Give over. Put your weapon down. Never was there a less threatening bodyguard. Friday the 13th would have been way less scary if they cast this guy as Jason. No, not yet. Please, give me a few moments. Oh my god, I hope he doesn't fucking miraculously escape this. He can't. Titus will do his job. This has got to be the end for him. Take what you want. Thank you. Don't give Cicero his little moment appreciating life. I've got no respect for this conniving, fence-sitting prick. He's not even a fence-sitter. I've been calling him that the whole show. He just literally pandles to whatever side he wants to win. Take care of my people. (laughs) Oh, shut the fuck up and die. I'm so sick of him, I literally cannot wait for this moment. Easiest if you kneel. (laughs) Is he getting the Gladius straight through the the bit there? I forget what it's called, but you know. The classic Gladius execution. <laughs> yes. 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 That is glorious. I thought until the last moment something was going to happen to get him out of there alive. Yes. Die, Cicero. May you be fired out of a cannon and buried in an unmarked grave, which is later pissed on. Niobe would only want her married to a decent man. And no decent man would have her. We might try and find her one. It's nice to see you've got a high opinion of your own daughter. (laughs) What the fuck? (laughs) Take back here, your brats, peasant. Oh, it's the guy with the note. Get out my way. (laughs) Yes. No intercepted. Fucking yes. That's glorious. That's glorious. Fuck you, Cicero. That's even better. Now nobody knows Octavian and Mark Anthony are coming. That is amazing. There is no way these guys are going to win this battle now. Good day, was it? Is that Cicero's head? Oh, peaches, okay. (laughs) Not stuck up like you might think. Wow, Titus, you completely misjudged him. It's so nice to know Cicero's last wish, the thing he was willing to die for, was not delivered as well. A final fuck you to Cicero. More names from Mark Anthony. Anthony has many enemies. It takes time to remember them all. Checks out. Sounds legit. I wonder if Octavian would give him his blessing to be with his sister, though. If you'd excuse me. No, wait. You've been avoiding me. This is the first time she's approached him. It seems like she sort of likes him back now. I have not spoken to you because I am aware that my feelings for you are hopeless. But that's for me to say, isn't it? Is this his way of saying that it's stupid of him to think like that anyway because he's loyal to Octavian? You'll not be married to the commendable son of a nobody. I'll marry who I like. You'll marry some useful nobleman of your brother's choosing. This guy is all over the place. How are you going to declare your undying love to her in front of her own mum last episode and now come with this flex when she actually shows some affection back? Hey! They seem like they would make a good couple, for sure. Agrippa, we can't find the wretched blasted figures for the blasted tax projections. Uh, yes. From the first scene I saw this guy in, the one with the darker hair, I knew I didn't like him. But he seems like the type of prick who would definitely get Agrippa in trouble if he saw him kiss Octavian's sister. We will not disburse the money until the conflict is settled. Non-homeless Santa Claus makes a good point. Idolaters can rule over your own people. Who do you think you are? Sit down, Moses. Are these guys going to take over the religion together? Like the High Council of the Jewish religious people in Rome? (laughs) It seems like they're literally planning on taking over this place. Would I be wrong in assuming that this religion is a precursor to Christianity? Roughing up the elders, no problem. But where's the point in something like that? Zion is the point, brother. We are redeeming the kingdom of Zion. Oh, they didn't even kill them. They just gave them a bit of a kick in. <laughs> you would assume this would warrant their deaths, but maybe the old guys in that religion don't roll like that. Shame not to be there. Uh, 
those days are behind us, brother. Yeah, I mean, kind of two minds about it. I would have loved to have seen Titus and Lucius on the battlefield alongside Octavian and Mark Antony, but that being said, they do have an Aventine to run, and there's some schemery going on towards Lucius's kids, so probably better they're both here. It's good to see you so happy and full of purpose again. It is. I second that. You can see it on my tombstone now. Second man on the Aventine. He handed out many fish. <laughs> <laughs> There have been worse tombstones, to be fair. I'm a soldier. I used to. Be. You got to stab a guy this morning. Surely that would, you know, surely that would quell your insatiable bloodlust for a couple hours. Don't know why I chose those words. I've never used the word quell, not insatiable before. I chose to bust them in a singular sentence. Strange the way the mind works sometimes. But you know, when in Rome. And amongst all the scheming, it's good to see these two hooking up, because they both are genuinely nice people. That is the coolest shower of all time. I don't want to leave you like this. Go! Typical guy, gets pussy and then leaves. His only regret was that he couldn't phone her a taxi, so she had to leave her own home. Why is she crying? Because she just fucked him or because he's going to war? Both are understandable. She's gonna have a low-born baby now. Octavian's gonna throw him off a cliff like a Spartan king. Saying about some woman, I expect. Oh. He attends to several whores or one lover. This guy's really interested in Agrippa's sex life as well. Brothel bed on such a day. Shame on you, Agrippa. I assure you, nothing of the sort. They set up so many points of potential drama, though. How's Octavian going to handle it when Agrippa tells him where he's been? I'm so glad I didn't miss you. Give me a kiss, sister. The men are waiting. Better she kisses you on the cheek just now. He went for the full death metal black mohawk today. It's a bit of a shit job being the guy that has to carry the standard. I know it's very significant and important, but it still looks like a shit job. It's not true. Oh, please, don't lie to your mother. You know, it's futile. Yeah, Atia seems to know everything. I love him. Soft as cheese. <laughs> Atia has absolutely no respect for true human emotions. <laughs> What's happened to you? Men came in the night. Oh, oh, Dad. <laughs> They have dishonoured me! You're safe now! She's been sexually assaulted as well. Fuck. I hope she feels a bit bad about that. She did just give the word to kill her father, not her entire family, and then sexually assault her. Jesus Christ. Titus truly does miss just being a soldier, doesn't he? The world's too complicated for our Titus. whole place stinks of fish, doesn't it? <laughs> One of the downsides of handing out free fish all day. If I was to go back in now, I'd probably be first spear at least. Leg it even. Titus, you worked so hard to get yourself this nice wife, you literally killed her future husband to get her. Don't leave her now. I'm pregnant. What? Hey, baby Titus, yes. <laughs> I knew that would make him smile while she's weeping into the bed. <laughs> this is my father's signet ring. I received it from my mother. Nice. Make sure you're wearing it when you die. How many legions? 19, it seems. To our 14. Oh, shit. They've got the advantage. Cicero was lying about 20 legions. If you need to urinate, now would be the time. I'm fine. It must be really hard to go to the bathroom after you've armored up. Give that extra an Oscar for that line delivery, he really meant that. Never have I seen someone mean go forward more convincingly in my life. Edmund! That guy delivered his advance like an opera singer. <laughs> oh, this is definitely the biggest battle shot we've had in the entire show. Oh shit! Imagine how gutted you would be putting the kill shot in with a gladius only to get your hand lopped off seconds later. (laughs) 
Now, this actually looks pretty big budget. I wonder how much that single shot there cost. What is happening? Do you know? No idea. Mark Anthony is so chilled during a full-scale battle. When in doubt... <laughs> that shows the balls of Mark Anthony as well. Like, he was well within his right to hang back and just watch it all pan out, but he wants to charge in. He wants a bit of the action. If you pay attention, some of these extras are doing a really shit job of making it look like they're swinging their swords with any sort of intent, but we'll let them off. It's an old show. Our right flank is gone. Tell me this episode has both Cicero and Brutus dying. That would be glorious. Here's a question. Did this episode come out before the movie 300? I was going to say it's very 300-ish, but there's actually a similar scene in Braveheart as well. So I think Braveheart is the OG everyone holds your shields up to deflect an arrow attack in cinema. But maybe there's one that predates that. I'm claiming it just now. Scotland, what? Braveheart, what? Even though, you know, fuck Mel Gibson. I can't believe they let him back in a good TV show casting him in the Continental. He's a Jew-hating racist. What happened? I hope Cassius has a Cassio, because it's time to die. Must go. Rest in peace to Cassius. You were a little rat, a traitor, a snake. I never liked you. And uh, you didn't really have any significant dialogue throughout this show either. Die. I hope it was painful. Not a traditional eulogy, but that's what I would have given him. And they're giving him and Cicero proper heroes deaths this show, like really brave before they go out. I'm in two minds about it, because I will never see them as heroic. I just see them as cowards doing one last thing that isn't completely ratish. Unless, of course, Octavian's forces all had little bits of cheese in their pocket, then it makes complete sense why he's walking in this direction. was an incredibly feeble attempt to kill just one of them. Oh, that's the end for you. I hope he takes as many blades as Caesar got. Play all the sad music you like. I do not feel bad for him one bit. Die. My only regret was that he didn't scream like a bitch. Oh no, the rich guy that wanted all the rich guys to still have all their money and not give anything to the poor people of the world. Oh no. <laughs> In what way is a senate any better than a tyrant? Please explain it to me. Oh, but it was, you know, at least everyone got to voice their own opinion. Yeah, all the rich people. Poor people weren't even allowed in the senate. Awesome, that's the Cicero's letter of Brutus. You know, Cicero's letter ended up on a kid's head. Brutus's ring ended up on some random dude that stabbed him. Brilliant. Okay, and that was episode 6 of season 2 of Rome, Filippi, or something like that. And I will be back in just a minute with my thoughts on that. So, Filippi, what did I think of that? Man, you already know I absolutely loved this episode. First, Octavian gave the order to kill a bunch of rich people who were still aligned with Brutus, etc. And we got to see the death of Cicero. Even better, Titus Pullo himself got to drive the sword into him. Oh, I'm sure a lot of people would have wanted to have traded places with Titus for that honour. And just when you thought he was going to be able to do one last rat action and get that letter of warning out to Brutus and Cassius, no, no, the guy got knocked off his horse and it got turned into a hat for Lucius's son to wear. A much better use of the letter than warning Brutus and Cassius. We saw Agrippa, or whatever his name is, get with Octavia. I really like the fact these two have gotten together. He clearly is just one of these people you can take at face value with no ulterior motives or nothing. He's just a simple dude who really loves her. She's been through enough shit already. It's cool that they've hooked up and kind of have Atia's blessing. 
Speaking of which, the most fucked up thing about that list of rich people that got executed was Atia just added Octavia's friend's dad's name to the list just because she didn't like the influence she was having on her daughter. And that led her entire family to get slaughtered and her to be sexually assaulted. That is fucking brutal regardless of what you think of that girl. Yes, she technically was being a bad influence. The hemp's one thing. But then moving up to opium and going to orgies is a completely different story which any of us as parents would not be cool with. So I can understand why Atia didn't like it. But yeah, still kind of fucked up what happened to her. And we finally got to see a few shots of a relatively big battle. Like they look like some big budget shots, especially the wide shots of an open field showing hundreds and hundreds of troops. I'm assuming that was a mixture of digital photography and special effects etc. But it looked really good on screen and it's nice to see the finally got a bit of budget to at least show parts of one of the large scale battles they've had in this show. There was one extra though killing the game who was at the front with his shield just sort of going peh. <laughs> Man, he would have lost his job at a medieval fair, let alone on a battlefield in ancient Rome, so to that one extra, next time swing your fucking sword like you mean it. But to everyone else, great job. Before we get into the final as well, we saw some new schemery getting set up this episode. First of all, the female slave who works in Lucius's house. She's obviously trying to play a little game just now, trying to flirt with Titus, trying to do this and that. I do not know what her end game goal is, but she seems to be definitely wanting to stop the pot in some way and I do not like this bitch. Last episode I legitimately felt sorry for her, this episode she's made me instantly dislike her. So you know, good job slave lady, within one episode you've made me 180 on you, what a bitch you are. And then we saw the Aventine crime lords paying a guy to start to flirt with Lucius's daughter. Again, I don't know what their end game is here because if they wanted to kill him, surely they could just get him to a meeting or something under false pretenses and then kill him? This seems like they're playing the long game to literally try and win over the daughter to fuck her dad over or something like that? I don't understand why they would target the daughter romantically as a way to get one up on Lucius. Obviously this will all be revealed to me before the end of this series. Hopefully, because you know, there isn't another season after this one. But yeah, strange tactic and I'm unsure why they would do that. But yes, the episode ended with both Cassius and Brutus dying. It is long overdue. I am so happy. I know there's still a lot of this season left to go and we've just had three of the primary antagonists, I th- I believe. A lot of you in the comments don't see them as antagonists, but I do. And, you know, Cicero, Cassius and Brutus all dying, but that is glorious to me and allows us time to, you know, settle other disputes. Maybe Mark Antony now wants to have a head-on with Octavian to see who comes out the sole victor. Then we've got all the new schemery going on in Rome itself, which has to be resolved. So, I'm not mad at all that these three guys are taken out of the picture. Long overdue, if you ask me, and this is definitely one of my favourite episodes of the entire series for obvious reasons, and I might just re-watch this motherfucker straight away as soon as I finish wrapping up this reaction. It was glorious. If you've liked this video, click like, subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this, ring the bell to be notified as to when they drop, if there's anything you want to talk about, comment down below, and share this around to anyone you think might appreciate it or want to watch these reactions along with us. My Patreon link is down in the description. If you become a patron, you get access to my blog, you get access to these reactions I put on YouTube a month and a half in advance, and you also get access to full-length versions of everything I react to. So consider becoming a patron, it helps me and my channel out so much, and until next time, I have been BA, peace.